Right, today we're going to work out the moment of inertia for a solid sphere. Alright, I've started by drawing a hemisphere on a standard XY Cartesian plane. Uh, what I'm going to do is slice that hemisphere up infinitesimally small cylinders. So uh, I've drawn one on there. I've, I've sliced on one of the slices, all right? Now that slice is going to have a certain amount of mass dm and it's going to have a tiny, infinitesimally small width dx, right? So that'll be a cylinder. I can write the mass of that cylinder will be the uh, density times the volume. So there's the density there, rho, times the volume of the cylinder, pi r squared, but the, the r in this case will be y. Yeah, and the thickness will be dx. All right, so that's the dm, the, the mass of that slice of cylinder. So now I can say the moment of inertia for that slice of cylinder will be half times the mass times the radius squared. Right, but the mass will be the mass of that segment, which was this bit up here, and the radius is the uh, the the y y squared right and that just comes from the moment of inertia for a cylinder half m r squared right in this case our m is dm and our r squared will be y squared for that for this particular cylinder so i come along here and i replace dm with what we worked out dm to be up there and i get this equation here now you can see We've got y squared and y squared, that'll be y power 4. So I rewrite the thing here with a half rho pi y to the power 4 dx. That's the moment of inertia for one slice, right? Next I can say the inertia of the whole thing is if I sum up all the inertias of each infinite, infinitesimally small slice and take limits from minus r to r, that means the limits would be from r to minus r if it was a whole sphere. But I'm only doing half a sphere, so we'll, that'll affect something later. So, uh, I swap my di here. Remember, half, rho, and pi are constants, so they can come outside the integral, and I end up with my limits, and uh, the integral of y to the power 4 with respect to dx. Now, obviously, I can't do anything with that because that variable is y and this is with respect to x so uh, I need to do some jiggery pokery and there's a way I can change this variable y to the power 4 so that it's in terms of x all right I need to come back up here and do that I can look at this triangle here that width there will be x that radius of it there will be y and the radius of the sphere, these three components together make a right angle triangle. And using a bit of Pythagoras, I can say r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Rearrange that so the subject is y squared. I get this. And then I square both sides. And I end up with y to the power 4 equals all this squared. And then I expand them brackets and I end up with that. Now this is now y to the power 4 in terms of x. So I'm going to substitute that back in down here. Here, look. And I get... Oh, and I also change the limits from 0 to r. From 0 to r. That means I'm doing a hemisphere, and I just need to double the answer to get the moment of inertia for the whole sphere, because it's a symmetrical object. So what I've done there... I've changed the limits from minus r to r, from 0 to r. And because I need to double the result, I just multiplied the whole thing by 2, which got rid of that fraction there. The half disappears. So the whole thing becomes rho pi outside the integral with limits from 0 to r. Then I substituted y to the power 4 into there. And now I can differentiate this, because I've got differentiated this... Uh, expression with respect to x all right and i can do that 
So let's go down ahead and do it. Uh, I end up with R to the power 4x. I end up with all this, okay, if I integrate each term with respect to x. Right, pretty simple. Uh, yeah, 1230 in mathematics. The next thing I need to do is shove my limits in. Now when the limit is zero, all this comes to zero. So I don't need to worry about that. So I can just put the R straight in and not subtract the lower limit. So I put the R in. Everywhere there's an X, I swap it for R. So I put that in like that and I end up with this. Uh, all in terms of r to the power 5. Right, you can see we've got three fractions to add up there with the lowest common denominator of 15. So I'll do that. And I get this. I can see all that will add up to 8 r to the power 5 over 15. We end up with that. And here the next step is I can replace this row this is row for the whole cylinder, yeah, because it's the inertia of the whole cylinder now. Uh, I can say row equals mass over volume. The mass of the whole sphere divided by the volume of the whole sphere, which you know from other maths classes is 4 thirds pi r cubed. I can rewrite that with the 3 on the top. So row equals 3m over 4 pi r cubed. I can substitute that back into here, look, for the row, and I end up with this. I can see the pi's cancel. I can rewrite it again like that. I can see r to the power 5 divided by r to the power 3. That'll give me r squared. Then the whole thing boils down to that. 2 fifths mr squared. Okay, so that's how you can derive the formula for the moment of inertia of a solid sphere. Again, it's where the use of integration to add up all these different tiny cylinders, add them all up, all their moments of inertia. It sums an infinite series, that's how we can use integration to, to tackle problems like this. It's really good.